What about Chris Farley? <laughs> I says, I says to the guy, okay, get this, get this. I says, I says to the guy, okay, wait, wait, wait. I get this, get this. I says, I says the guy's standing right there, right? Have you never seen that? No, I haven't seen that one. Uh, what? Is, yeah. What? Chris Farley is Tommy Boy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was that an SNL skit? Probably, but he's he's sitting there and he's looking at the he's like looking at the camera and he's doing his really manic like laugh that he does that mm-hmm. he did. Mm-hmm. He's like smoking a cigarette and he's just so I says I says I says <laughs> I says to the guy right he's standing right there he's standing right there right so I says to the guy wait 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 for this I says I says to the guy right so he's standing right there okay you gotta get this so I says. <laughs> It says, and it goes on for like five minutes. That's fucking hilarious. And I find it incredibly annoying, but I watch it every single time because <laughs> I find it funny at the same time. Because it's, it's actually strangely captivating. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he was so fucking funny. He has a, a one of, he's like doing an interview with, I want to say, uh, uh, Paul McCartney. It's like a joke interview on SNL. Like, <laughs> Paul McCartney? Yeah. And he's like, he's like, hey, remember that time? And you were like, and he's like. At the you were at the venue and it was John Lennon and like you guys like played music stuff and Paul was like yeah and he's like yeah that that was pretty cool wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that made me like think. the entire interview was him just like asking weird questions be like yeah that, that was that was cool huh? Do you remember that one with um, uh, Eddie Izzard and the Monty Python crew? Oh wait, are you talking about when like they're all like lined, lined up? up? And they're all like sharing stories back and forth and oh, off camera. Yeah, you hear someone like, yeah, I totally remember that. And it kind of pans over and it's <laughs> yeah. Eddie. And they all look at him like, who the fuck are you? And he's like, yeah, that was, that was, that was great. No, yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. 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 And they're like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> it's Eddie. Yeah. 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 Hey, that works. All right. Lead us this is Tommy. <laughs> this is Jacob. This is Tommy, Tommy and Jacob's, Jacob's mixtape. <laughs> Everybody, we Tommy and I are kind of low energy today. Uh, we uh, we had some fun times with some friends last night. And what are you doing? I'm gauging where if my, this is a good place for my water. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> like, no, but is it like going to be comfortable? Mind your own business. <laughs> it's not hurting you. <laughs> oh my god! I wish we had cameras right now. <laughs> I'm not doing shit to you. <laughs> Uh, All right, let's let's get let's, let's general, focus. I think that's gonna be the general theme today. Yep, uh, it's just kind of. I mean, let, let this is kind of a weird movie to talk about too. For so let's. I mean, <laughs> like last week, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. There's gonna be a lot of topics that are gonna be triggering to people. Content warning. Yeah. Content warning. I didn't realize that going because I I suppose a lot. So that we, like this movie that, definitely is a lot more with the content warning than the lobster. La- I don't know. The but, opening scene itself. But last week, yeah, that's off the bat. Last week, I had seen Lobster. He had not. He had mm-hmm. seen has seen Swiss Army Man. I have not, or had not. Excuse me. Um, and yeah, just off the bat, there's a lot of stuff in this. I so, mean, this movie itself just deals with kind of a heavy theme of loneliness in general. Yeah, and mental health. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of mental health stuff in this, mm-hmm. uh, dealing with loneliness and. Depression, depression, and delusion, and who's yeah. Who's so, just a content warning. There's going to be a lot of yeah. topics on here that we're going to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, that, to so, be, we haven't even said the movie yet, have we? Well, I mean, I did. I, did, did you say Swiss Army Man? I did. Yeah. Oh, okay. I couldn't. I'm like, wait. Are we just and the the elusive <laughs> movie we are talking about? <laughs> the entire episode where we never say what the movie is, but we just talk about it. That'd <laughs> yeah. be kind of fun. <laughs> you have to guess. Yeah. Them. What is the movie? <laughs> Um, oh yeah, so yeah, uh, Swiss Army Man is what we're talking about this week, and another A- A24, um, and, uh, so it's on IMDb, got a 7.0 rating, um, Rotten Tomatoes had a 72% tomato meter and a 72% audience score, it was even, um, and then a 64 Metacritic, so pretty, like, medium, average, high, all around the board for, like, yeah. you know, reviews and whatnot. I personally like this movie a lot um, just because of like the themes that it deals with and just the absurdity of it. I and like scenes. The performances are fucking phenomenal in my opinion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the performances are really good, but it's like, I didn't, uh, yeah, I liked certain <laughs> scenes. I didn't like the movie as a whole. Mm-hmm. I found myself checked out a lot and then checked. Oh, oh That's I'm back. He, I can oh, see that. Yeah. Oh, oh, now I'm back kind of thing. It's, it's very, um, uh, like it's almost episodic in a strange way. 
Oh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, so uh, it was released at Sundance on January 22nd, 2016. Um, and then nationwide, it was released Jan- July 1st of 2016. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there was also like a limited release like in early or in mid-June. I remember because that's when I saw it. I saw it in like mid-June in like a weird, like er- like limited release. Yeah, this has always been on my radar to watch, but never mm-hmm. got around to it. Yeah. You know? Um, and then, yeah, this kind of like, again, with um, The Lobster, this movie, like, since it it was more, it's more of like an art house film type thing, like super indie um, well, art house. Uh, it doesn't really have much of like a, 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 a box office sales. Yeah, like, like not not really internationally ranked, but domestically it, it was at 177. Oh, I got 163 domestically. We need to re-talk about the in-year calendar thing. I think that's what's happening. Oh, yeah. I always do the in-year. I always thought it Because the other one is... Wait. Well, we'll, we'll talk about it offline. Off air. Um, but yeah. Uh, did you count the movies that you saw this year? <laughs> 43. Uh, it was like around 30. You're around 30? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I, was, I saw 43. Yeah, uh, if you didn't listen to last episode, we're going to start trying to play this little game within the episode of who... We brought up... La- it was last week. Mm-hmm. Last week, who actually? Which one of us has seen more movies? I think it's literally more. You've seen more modern movies. True. Yeah, that's what you said last week. Yeah. So we're gonna just every year that we have a, starting now, 2016. Mm-hmm. Every year we're going to count the top, 200. Yeah. That came out and just. Well, I'm just gonna go through the entire list. It's usually 200. Yeah. It's like the I think mm-hmm. they only list 200. Yeah. Um, and I say it's like around 30 because there's a couple movies on here. I was like. I remember watching The Secret Life of Pets, but I don't remember watching The Secret Life of Pets. That's a really that's cute. It's cute. Yeah, super yeah, cute. cute. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I put it on, and I was sitting there watching it, but I don't remember wa- watching my, it. It's tickling my lip. Tickling your lip. Little piece of hair. Okay. Um, what do you got for your... Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> what I got for my synopsis... Uh, Man on deserted island finds his Wilson in a bloated magical corpse named Manny. Yeah, that's a good way to come in, I guess. Yeah. Fallon came up with Wilson. Wilson. And I was like, oh, yeah, actually. He's kind of like Wilson. Yeah. yeah, he's kind of his Wilson, his, his weird rock in yeah. this situation. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, I'm sorry. Well, oh, my God. There's even like, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's go into creators and whatnot. Um, so this was written and directed, created by what they are called together as the Daniels. Um, that's kind of I think that's kind of like their production companies, the Daniel or just or is it just Daniels? I was going to say, I think it's just Daniels. Yeah, because they're both name is Daniel. But um, they go well, like, one is Dan Kwan and the other one is Daniel Shiner. Sh- Sh- I'm just like, wait, I'm having a hard time here. Um, Really? They probably they're really not super well known other than just kind of like working like before this a lot of shorts a lot of um like they did some tenacious D music videos they did a lot of music videos yeah. um they also uh, Quan helped co-found the WDMV mm-hmm. uh, we direct music videos which is like a oh, okay. international like uh, collaboration of music video mm-hmm. creators. So did they work on um, Childish Gambino's This Is America? Oh, I didn't see. I don't know. I don't. I don't because th- the the cinematographer of this movie did, and I was wondering if maybe that's where they, if that's one of the things they collaborated together. On. No, 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 they didn't. I, I, I actually, I just, yeah, never mind. Okay. I know they didn't. Okay. Yeah, because I just, I remember, I just looked at the credits of Childish Gambino, like a twenty minutes ago. <laughs> um. But yeah, so the like most recently, really, I'd say after Swiss Army Man, like they've done some stuff with uh, Aquafina as Nora from Queens, which if you haven't watched that show, it's fucking hilarious. Um, and then I just showed Tommy a movie that, that's coming out this year that they're that's like kind of their their next big A twenty four possible hit is um this movie called Everything Everywhere All at Once, which plays with multi dimension, which is kind of weird. That's that's kind of like a that's a it's a. Uh, very popular thing right now. Yeah, I was gonna say it feels like, like it, when I was watching it, I was thinking the like the one. Yeah. Because of oh, the, yeah. the fighting and everything. Mm-hmm. That's when I first thought. Dude, yeah, the cho- that choreography like, looks fucking cool yeah, too. Yeah, it's like the one but good. Yeah. You know, like I mean I, I like the one. <laughs> I don't think it's good though, but it's I enjoy it. Um but yeah, it's cool. It's like this 
woman and she's able to it's like, it's like she's able to like to kind of give an idea she's able to jump it she can jump into her other parallel universe. it looks like she gets pulled into it i don't know yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll jump pulled whatever yeah. i just mean like as opposed to like you know you running into your other self you your consciousness lives through that other yeah. you which i was like that's a weird yeah, that's interesting. That's a weird. I'm really, thing. I'm really, I'm really interested in seeing it. I mean, yeah, it'll probably play at the Egyptians. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to say that. that's coming out in March. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have anything else about the Daniels? No, just really that. I mean, um, one directing award at Sundance for uh, Swiss mm-hmm. Army Man. Yeah. And yeah, I guess that's the biggest thing is that they really had a big career in music videos and now are going into mm-hmm. film, like yeah. cinematography, full length feature films yeah yeah yeah. and well i think and also like they went from shorts and whatnot yeah and they have like they they've worked together on a lot of stuff um so i do want to do a quick uh with the cinematographer as well because this movie is beautifully shot a lot of very captivating pictures um a lot of like just it's it's it was all it was filmed in northern california um which like the giant trees like the redwoods and everything yeah it's like it's like beautiful scenery and whatnot um, but, uh, his name is Larkin Seipel or Seipel. Um, and he all, he's now just kind of working with the Daniels. It looks like, cause he's also going to be the, um, cinematographer, everything, everywhere, all at once. Um, he was the cinematographer for Childish Gambino's This is America music video. Um, and he's done, uh, uh, like he's just done a lot of, a lot of, a lot more of like music videos as well. It looks like he's starting to get more into film as well with, because of Daniels and whatnot. Um, so, oh, he was the cinematographer for, I don't feel at home. I don't feel at home in this world anymore. Yeah. The Elijah Wood Netflix. Oh, yeah. interesting. You can, you kind of see the aesthetic there. Yeah. Once yeah. I saw that, I was like, okay, mm-hmm. interesting. So yeah, he's got a very, I gotta stop saying that fucking word. What? Interesting. interesting. I'm so sorry about last week. Interesting. I listened to the edit of it and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Maybe you didn't notice until I brought it up. But no, I, I, I've never really noticed it. Good God, find a new word, mother. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, Sorry. All right, uh, but yeah. So Larkin Seipel, um, the, the cinematographer of this, and let's. Uh, when you want to go into uh, starting this, this might be actually kind of be a quick episode. Now that I think about it. Oh, um, I guess then, in, uh, since you did cinematography, I want to go ahead and oh, say music. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was by. Um, Andy Hall and Robert McDowell mm-hmm. of a Manchester Orchestra, and I found the music in this to be quite lovely. It's very captivating. It's cool. It pulls you like the music itself kind of pulls you into it in another way because, like, I feel like the performance. Are, the, are they pretty famous? I feel like they're pretty famous. Cause whatever. Manchester whatever. Orchestra. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I don't know in, in the indie circle, like they're kind of because they're like Death Cab for Cutie. Like, yeah, you just seem surprised when I was like, I don't think I know them. Yeah, no, because like, because you know, like Death Cab, and uh, I mean, I guess Death Cab's on another level of popularity as well. Mm. But like, their umbrella, like Silver Sun pickups. Well, I guess they're more alternative, but you know. Okay, but, but yeah, yeah, I just thought that was cool because I I did uh, the music was really cool. Um, yeah, it's um, and what's interesting is also I, I was I saw in an article that Daniel Radcliffe was saying is that the the uh, the musicians for the for the soundtrack they also they they had made music specifically to listen to while they were filming it, and you can hear some of it in the actual like re- like like um, in the scenes. Like some of the music that's playing is actually being played live with Paul Dano and Daniel Radcliffe in their scene. Yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. I think I read something. I think, and I it like something. it's like it kind of like created an atmosphere for them in their performances as well. Mm-hmm. So I mean, this movie seemed to, I mean very interesting and like a different type of way for filming. I guess like the Daniels, I think they're gonna have a very big career. Like they're gonna, I think, I think we're seeing the beginning of like maybe the new Coen Brothers. Oh, like honestly, wow, that's yeah, quite a claim. No, I mean they're because they're, they're just so young and just like just you. I mean, if you're looking at Coen Brothers' like early career, they started in like weird comedy as well, like Raising Arizona mm-hmm. with Nicolas Cage and John. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just thinking about you know, their, it's like they're trying to remember their, their early their, filmography. Yeah, their filmography. Um, there's one another. I think there's is it the comedian? Is that the Coen Brothers with Robert De Niro? Oh, I know what you're talking about. I think is, that's is that them? what it's called. I actually want to check that real quick. Okay. 
No, I was incorrect. It's not the, the comedian. Apparently, is a 2016 movie with Robert De Niro. I thought there was another. I don't know. That I'm kind of confused. But no, like Raising Arizona. Hardcore crossed wire somewhere. Yeah, uh, Raising Arizona is like one of their mo- or more earlier movies. But they also have like one called A Blood Simple. But also, it's kind of weird because like in their early career, like one would be ri- like put out as like a writer, and the other one would be put as a director. And then like they both produced it, but then they were both directing it and both kind of wrote it. I don't know. They're like. Their IMDb credits are kind of strange. Hmm. But yeah, um, I going back with Daniels, I personally feel like we see our generation's new Coen brothers kind of like starting off, at the, uh, rising up right now. Cool. Well, let's see. I mean, also, it's like it was late. We have to, excuse me, uh, kind of see what uh, everything everywhere all at once or how yeah. that kind of goes, you know. That would definitely help, like... Um, Give an idea of what their trajectory might be. Yeah. Because, yeah, I think, yeah, they're both uh, born in 87, 86. So they're my age. They'd be our generation. I, yeah, for some reason, I thought they were older. When you were like, they're really young. I was like, I thought they were older. I mean, fuck you. I'm, I'm young. I'm still young. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes are. <laughs> All right, let's go into starring and whatnot. Yes. Um, so this really only has, like, it just two actors and until, like, the very end um, and it's literally like mo- the entire movie is just led through with Paul Dano and Daniel Radcliffe. But let's uh, p- talk about uh, Paul Dano first. Y- you okay? Yeah, I'm trying to. Th- I'm doing that. Uh, what's my favorite role of his? Oh, okay. In my head. Um, so I, I actually I've just been kind of writing down like what I've seen him in, and which I realize I've only seen him in a, a handful of stuff, which is The Girl Next Door, um, Little Miss Sunshine, There Will Be Blood, and Cowboys and Aliens. And then he's gonna be playing the Riddler in the Batman coming up. I didn't. He's a uh, got a like a, a a recurring role in the Sopranos, which I don't remember. I don't remember Paul Dano being in the Sopranos. Well, he was a fucking baby in that. Who had had him in a kid? Yeah, no, totally. But I don't yeah. remember. But he's like, I'm sure he looks the same. <laughs> like I feel like. Yeah, he is kind of one of those actors that just kind of hasn't aged. He's like, yeah, I mean, he looks always looks the you know. <laughs> like, I would say my best my favorite performance from him is in There Will Be Blood. He is fucking amazing in that movie. I also don't remember him uh, remember him in a Ballad of Jack and Rose. Another Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, I've never seen it. I own it. Really? Yeah. It's hmm. still in the plastic. <laughs> I went on a big uh Daniel Day Lewis kick and just bought all of his a bunch of his That's fair. Stuff. I mean he's one of the greatest actors of all time. Um Um Yeah, I guess there will be blood he was pretty incredible in i mean he's really good in little miss sunshine too honestly this movie might be one of my favorite performances now that i think about it he because it's this is that's funny i never thought about putting the movie that we're talking about (laughs) in like the the running yeah you know what i mean (laughs) the way that he like his performance in this is so captivating he's like strangely squirrely and then like he's like he's so manic you know. I think I like him a lot in this as being like the average Joe, mm-hmm. but then there will be blood. He's such a yeah, terrifying personality. He, oh man, yeah, I don't really see. I don't know. I want to say terrifying. He's captivating. Religious people freak me out. I mean, that's tr- that's <laughs> well, fair. like this kind. This kind of religious person yeah. freaks me out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, there's something that had fuck me. God damn it. <laughs> yeah a tornado alarm's going off in my head right now <laughs> jesus no, i don't have a headache or anything yeah. i'm just like i have a like a, your brain just not working yeah i have a hardcore yeah. thought and then it just goes, goes away yeah um well let's move on to daniel radcliffe yeah maybe he'll come back um which if you don't know who daniel radcliffe is you've obviously never seen harry potter because he is harry potter <laughs> and he's which actually it was, it was I, movies i wrote down that i've seen him in harry potter and what if you never, you never seen Horns? No, nope, never, never watched Horns. I think you'd like Horns. Yeah, I mean, uh, all of his his entire career, like, I've always wanted to watch Horns. I've always wanted to watch Woman in Black. Um, I've always wanted, like, I've, I've it was as soon as I saw that uh, picture of him in, like, the like the guns and, like, the bear, like, slippers, oh, guns akimbo, I've, I want to see well, that He wakes really up and they're, like, strapped to his, like, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, like, yeah. implanted into his hands. I've seen bits from the young doctor, uh, what the, the young doctor old, what's it called? A young doctor's notebook and other stories. Like he plays a young doctor, and John Hamm plays older doctor. That's literally their names in it, and it's like set in like the 1920s or something. It's like old time doctors, mm-hmm. and it's there in like Germany. It's a very weird show. 
like very absurd in a in a in a strangeness because I think he plays like the younger like it's like a time lapse thing. He's a younger he's the younger doctor and John Hamm is him as the older doctor. I don't know. I think I've like I said I've seen bits from episodes and it didn't make sense. So <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe grows up to look like John, John Hamm. Hamm. <laughs> yeah. Um. I will. I do want a, a suggestion though. Actually, mm-hmm. the Victor Frankenstein movie is actually pretty good. Yeah. Do you like refuse to watch it? It just looks awful. It's actually, I was pleasantly surprised. It's not great. It's not. Yeah. But it's an interesting take on it because what's his name? Professor Xavier? Uh, uh, James. Uh, 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 Marsden? Mar- no. No. What? That's Cyclops. James McAvoy. McAvoy. James McAvoy plays the doctor yeah. and then Daniel Radcliffe plays Igor. And it's pronounced Igor. No. It was Igor. No. But they wrong that one day. <laughs> um, but it's it's interesting because it is all about the creation of the monster, but it's about their relationship. Wait, is it actually pronounced Igor in the movie? I don't fucking remember. Because it's Igor. That's how it's pronounced. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Igor is Victor Frankenstein. That's the joke. It's like, no, it's yeah. pronounced Igor. Well, it's a, I thought it was Frankenstein. Igor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about that. <laughs> we're not talking about Young Frankenstein. What I'm saying is I just think the whole the going into the idea of their relationship was an interesting take on the story. Fair. Okay. And then, you know, him getting his God complex and, you know, and it, but, whatever. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, and Woman in Black, I need to rewatch. I did watch it, but it was also when I was in that phase, like when we talked about uh, oh. Haunting of Hill House. In Bly Manor, I was like, yeah. if it wasn't scary, it's not really. It's it, I think, you know, horror movies not scary. No, it's a, it's a gothic love story. Yeah, it's like yeah. a ghost story. Yeah, ghost, Victorian yeah. ghost story. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I find it, it kind of interesting, like the movie, like obviously Harry Potter, but like the only other movie I've seen him in is a romantic comedy. How is what if? I really liked it. I thought it was cute. Adam Driver is fucking captivating as hell in it. It gave me a Silver Linings Playbook kind of vibe when I watched the trailer. I can, no, but not as dark. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can kind of see what you're saying because Silver Linings Playbook gets fucking intense with its like uh, talking to depression and anger issues. Well, bipolar in general. Um, <clears throat> what if doesn't have any of that? Like, there's what if doesn't have the depth that Silver Linings Playbook has? It's more of a romantic comedy. Yeah, but it's like it plays through this whole thing of like they they're best. Fr- they find each other just being best friends because she has a boyfriend, and it's kind of like this whole thing of like can a man and woman just be best friends but then they end up actually falling in love and it gets kind of weird like there's a moment there's a moment in it where you're like this is just kind of like every other fucking love story that i watch but the way that they're telling it is just kind of like more interesting Mm. it's very generic but uh, kind of like the opposite of like the breakup yeah you know I don't remember the breakup. It's, uh, Vince Vaughn and Jennifer Yeah, no, I'm just not remembering it. Oh, like it, and you, you know. It, oh, yeah, the way that it ends. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah. they don't get back together. Yeah. And it's like, the, and they meet and they're like, oh, how you doing? And it like ends like that. And you're like, I like that because mm-hmm. it, does it doesn't follow the formula. It's it like, all, not everything yeah. magically works out. The interesting thing I will say about What If is I can't remember the actress's name that's in it, but um, she's, I can't, I can't remember what else she's in. Um, but she kind of has like a manic pixie dream girl feel to her. But she's actually a flushed out character. Hmm. So it's kind of like a comment on like how these like young independent like indie boys, you know, in their black hoodie and tight jeans. <laughs> I'm describing myself. Um, just kind of like easily fall for like the whimsical girl type thing. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah. So and then just I mean, and then Mary Elizabeth Winstead is in this movie for a hot second. <laughs> But she has a, her role. Her, her she's a pivotal role. She's a pivotal role, but she's not really in it. Yeah. Yeah. Until the last fifteen minutes or and so. And then Mary Elizabeth Winstead, uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World, Birds of Prey. I fucking hate that movie. I've seen her in a lot of things actually, on uh, like Ten Cloverfield Lane. Yep. Um, live, live Free, Die Hard, Sky High, Sky High. I was actually yeah. I think that's the first time I've ever seen her in anything. Yeah, probably. I mean, that's one of her earliest yeah. roles. Yeah. It's like a Disney. That was actually Sky High. Sky High's really good. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sky High is like a. Uh, about a high school for s- kids of superheroes and supervillains, mm, and yeah. it, like teaches them well, how to use their powers. Yeah, and... I guess they actually, yeah they'd find supervillains in it. Yeah, yeah eventually, yeah. The that... bullies, but the bully's dad is a supervillain. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they all again. It's like we'll teach you. It's, oh, you ooh, your... I almost did it. I almost did the video game thing, and I stopped myself. <laughs> I bring up a video game at least. Yeah, once you're or... gonna do that. It's you. It's like, don't, don't, don't be ashamed of yourself. It's like fable. <laughs> Okay. They I take you to school and it's like, we will teach you the tools. You will decide what to do with them. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> uh, um, yeah. Then, have you seen her and the thing? Have you, have you seen any of the things? Because there's three of them. It's a remake on a remake. Like the thing? Yeah. The snow? Yeah. No, I haven't seen, seen any of them. I haven't seen any of them. That surprises me because you love your creature creature. Freature. Your creature. There you go. There it is. Your creature. <laughs> creature. Um, no, I haven't seen any of them. That surprised me, yeah. I, I was surprised that you didn't see horns. I think it was one of those things like I always, it was, it's one of those like I always wanted to get to watch it, but I just, I always wanted to watch it, but it was, ne- the time has never been the right, right time. Right time. Yeah. Yeah, it's just because you also read the book of it, right? Yeah, the books. I mean, the book's better, obviously, just just because the the change of the powers. But the, just real quick, his powers are: if you're looking at the horns that are growing, mm-hmm. you he can't make you do anything. But if you are you are compelled to tell him your most like deepest darkest like sin that you want to commit, mm-hmm. and if he tells you to do it, you suddenly are like okay, and you go do it. Mm-hmm. But you have no recollection of having the conversation with him. Yeah. So he starts to use that to try and solve his girlfriend's murder. Oh, interesting. So it's like a... It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Like, And he's being blamed for the murder as being the boyfriend. And Man, we can get, we can, we're going to get... So, we're we're going to get really distracted really quickly. Like, I almost wanted to start talking about a Joseph Gordon-Levitt movie. But let's get... Why? He's like, <laughs> because it made me think of Brick and the how that's like a mystery. <laughs> uh, but like, at least keep it with the actors that are in the <laughs> I film. I don't know where we're let, All right. So let, uh, do you have anything else you want to talk about with that? I feel like we should move into reviews. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about. But if we're going to talk about this movie, then no. <laughs> we can go to reviews. Um, so on Metacritic, there are 23 positive, uh, 11 mixed, and 2 negative. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Who do I got first? For my positive, he gave it a... I forgot to write that part down. He gave an 88 out of 100. Uh, uh, Their name is Lawrence Topman, uh, the Charlotte Observer. If I understand the intentions of writer-directors Daniel Kwan and Daniel, or the Daniels, the film moved me profoundly. I'll let you come up with your interpretation, or I'll share mine privately to avoid spoilers, but it's a unique look inside a troubled mind. Mm -hmm. Um, The mixed... I meant to write down like the number. I've been trying to do that, and I forgot to do it again. (laughs) Mike Scott at um, Michael Scott. <laughs> Mike Scott at the Times. Pick a Yoon. Pick a Yoon. The Times. Pick a Yoon. Mike Scott. You might love it or you might hate it, but you won't soon forget it, and you won't be able to say you've seen a movie quite like Swiss Army Man before. That's yeah. This is definitely one of the most unique movies I've ever watched. Yeah, I was like, that's like I think the best one uh, that uh, mirrored my feeling about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Joshua Cothorpe gave it a 20 out of a hundred, uh, at time out 20 out of a hundred, yeah. wow. a ridiculously infantile film. One that flatters itself by intimidating a deeper commitment about suppressed masculinity or romantic passive, passivity, passivity. That's interesting. The suppressed masculinity thing. Yeah. And even just like, what was the second thing you said about romantic passive, pacificity? Passive. Passivity. Passivity? <laughs> it's passivity. I thank you. <laughs> um, no, passivity. that's really that's really interesting to bring up those themes and have it be such a low score because that's actually a very that's that's actually a really interesting like theme to think about for this movie. Yeah, that's what I thought. Like, yeah, I thought that's why I was interested. Like, uh, a good, it's like, yeah, that is kind of like part of the point. I mean, of that's the, the, the movie. point of the movie. Yeah, but I guess the way that he's talking about been infantile. You know, like he probably couldn't get past the fart jokes. I had a really hard time with that. Then they like made it work. Yeah, I know. That's the weird thing. Is like it's like this is fucking so infantile, and then like it's not. Like it quickly isn't. You know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like it's weirdly, str- it's like strangely deep. Has like a lot to talk about, and then yet just like all of a sudden there's like this bad fart joke in the middle of it. Like- but then, that, but then, like that, kind of like becomes like a core thing of like the comfortability of like being yourself in front of others is letting That's, yourself yeah. fart in front of another person. That becomes like, yeah, they just make it important. Yeah, which I thought was genius. Like it's fucking, it's great. Um, I guess we can actually kind of go into themes and stuff. I mean, unless you have any, do you have anything else you want to talk about or bring up with your reviews? Yeah. No. I mean, yeah. So like, um. What was like? I actually have a pretty like solid thought here on like so the farting like I just said is like like as a theme, 
like um farting is it's about um finding the accept his acceptance of self-worth not afraid to live uh not afraid to live anymore uh finally allowing oh that uh uh, finally allowing manny to be free in his mind so like when like at the end when he finally like flies off into the or farts off into the into the water that's kind of and he farts in front of everybody it's like even though yeah he's getting arrested and all this horrible shit's happening around him he's finally finding this complacency and comfortability within himself Mm -hmm. you know um some of the uh, some of the metaphors I, i want us to kind of think about as we go through it is the island at the beginning um the trash that's around them the bear itself like at the uh, towards like the i guess that's kind of the climax of it I, well i guess the entire that this movie just escalates as a climax just goes up 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 then yeah um and then just like kind of loneliness in general um but let's see i have a by putting his identity into the dead body he is able to control the narrative and his and live in his delusions However, seeing and hearing himself reflected back at himself, he kind of begins to find solace and help within his own fractured mind, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Sorry, did I just jump around a bunch of weird, like... Yeah. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) It was just like a... Like a a big buffet of existential crisis. (laughs) That you wanted me to all process and eat at the same time. Like, I... All right. I got nothing to say. <laughs> what do you want to talk about first? <laughs> well, I mean, do you want to, let's go through it and then the themes that pop up. Yeah, I guess that's a good thing. So, yeah, let's really like let's talk about this island at the beginning, because I personally. So a lot of this movie, you kind of got to like, you know, take it as a carrot in some ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I don't think he was actually stranded on an island. I think it's a metaphor of him being stranded in isolation in his mind. Like he is somewhere trying to kill himself, but I don't think he actually was on an island. And he's just in the woods trying to kill himself. Because this movie begins with him like attempting to hang himself, but apparently he's stranded on some island. Yeah, I mean, I think he's, I don't know, I took it as he's stranded on an island. And only it, only because of the way it ended. Because the corpse actually did fart its way into the water? Yeah. Like, <laughs> if it... I don't know. There's a whole bit towards the end where I'm like, oh, like, we're, we're having a fight club moment. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, flash, flash. Oh, this this is all an illusion of the mind, you know? Mm-hmm. And then when the ending happened, I'm like, oh, wait, that all actually happened? <laughs> but I still think that's still... Uh, even though, like, the corpse kind of does that, I still think it, it's more... That's just more of a metaphor like even even with them kind of witnessing it like i still don't think it technically like happened i don't know like it's we- like that's a, it's a weird thing with this movie is that even though things seem like it's in the reality of the movie i still don't think it's properly happening the way that we are seeing it it's all just still just it's a representation as of the, an idea as the audience were all living in the delusion yeah like I mean, I guess that's uh, uh, it's one of those that's up for we're interpretation. Because seeing, we're seeing all of this from uh, Paul Dano's, uh, or I guess, do we want to call him Hank or do we want to call him Manny? Because re- he is actually Hank, but he calls the body he, Hank. Oh, no, he, he calls, calls the body, body Manny. Manny. Hank is the bo- That's right. Yeah, that's right. Hank is Daniel Radcliffe, actually, because he's actually Manny. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. I got that confused. I got that backwards. What? What? The body... Daniel Radcliffe is Manny. Dano is Hank. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that was... Yeah, okay. I think I think I got it. I think I got it. <clears throat> so, Daniel Radcliffe is Manny. Paul Dano is Hank. Yeah, I, I, I definitely... I Yeah, I put some weird narrative twists. I think it's because of that... Um, the... The 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 phone miss miss the identity swap with the with phone the, and then the way that he's talking about himself or as he's like telling like creating this narrative with Manny on the bus with Mary Elizabeth what's, what's her character's name actually they call her Sarah yeah they call her Sarah I okay. can't remember that's her I actual think, name in the yeah. movie yeah um yeah they uh since he has that whole. Like narrative, I was kind of like I thought that maybe the names were weird too, but no, it's it's more he is still projecting 
a narrative that he can control with this dead body. Yeah. So <sighs> Hank Dano yes. is on this island, whether it be metaphorical in the mind or literal yeah. stranded. Because I think I'm going to lean towards that he's actually on this island somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, he a body washes up on shore and he thinks, Oh, I'm saved. Like there's no, or uh, not even that actually. Now that I think about it, he's also just happy to see someone else. Yeah. And that there's actually an interesting thing is like, it's when it's seeing the dead body, there is a moment of like, yeah, there's kind of like, he wants to like, you know, not, he doesn't want to hang himself anymore to, at for a hot second because mm-hmm. he wants to go and try and like say like he's like oh this is another like another person the daniels actually described this scene in an interview on npr um in a weirdly interesting way it's a kwan who's talking about it and he's like um like uh it's like he says they're going to talk so what happens when you die you decompose and all of it leaves your body they're talking about the farting and whatnot and then Quan's like, yeah, and but the core idea of the image is a very real thing. It's something that no one wants to confront. And I think in the original script we wrote, the character Hank kind of staring at this farting corpse who he thought was going to be his salvation, we kind of liken it to him staring into a black hole, a meaningless existential void. A stark look into the future. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Interesting. So it's kind of like Fuck it. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's like kind of in a this weird way is like finding this dead body is a reflection into what uh, Hank is actually going to become. And Hank then decides not to, but then finds salvation. And he finds salvation in seeing death, like to not be dead anymore. Like he doesn't want the death anymore because he actually sees what it is. Yeah. Well, but like he, then he goes up thinking that, Manny Daniel Radcliffe is alive. Figures, oh, he finds out he is dead. This mm-hmm. is like the beginning of the fart joke. Yeah, he farts and he kind of chuckles to himself. Uh, you know, what, what was he saying? He's like actually like he's having this very deep thought, existential thought. And he's like, I thought maybe if you were alive, then it would give me some type of reason or purpose. And <laughs> just kind of like uh, this fart in the middle of this like deep thought and just yeah. fucking ruins it. But then he like takes his belt off and goes to like hang himself again. But then the body starts farting a lot like and really convulsing. Sing, convulsing and yeah. It. Ooh, I just. We, <laughs> it's like he kind of like he re- well like he sees that like the farting is kind of like propelling it through the water. So then he rides the dead body like, like a, a motorboat dolphin. Like a jet ski. <laughs> yeah. That's just farting to get off the main, to get off this island, to get back to mainland. Yeah. That's how this movie starts, everybody. Yeah. That's the beginning of the movie. Apparently a lot of people took, walked out. Yep. I was about to say people walked out because they felt very alienated, which I thought, I thinking, th- that's a very interesting thought to think about. Because that's well. kind of the point of the movie as well. Yeah. <laughs> You know, there's a there's this a uh, form of theater called uh, Brechtian theater. Um, uh, Brecht was a very famous um, theater artist, and his whole thing was that to th- that theater shouldn't it's there shouldn't be this like sheen invisible sheen of like there's performance on stage in the audience, like the audience is part of the show, mm-hmm. and so the actors should be aware of the audience, and the actor should be aware. Wait, the actors should be aware of the audience. The audience should be aware that there's that they are performers on stage. And how do we break that wall down and actually have the audience be kind of a participant in in it? And so in one of the ways it is like it's like alienating the audience into understanding that they are an audience member. Okay. It's a very weird existential thought as well. Mm-hmm. Um which this movie has a I mean a lot to like a lot of thought with that I I feel as well. Um so yeah, so metaphor like that's why I kind of think that the island is a metaphor of it's like when he's he's trying to kill himself and when you're that when you're that alone and that depressed you find yourself you feel like you're stranded alone on an island. There is no hope for you. You know. Which yeah. I mean, it could. I mean, it could just. I mean, it doesn't have to be a metaphor. Like he could have actually been, but like there is just very much that's this very symbolic thing of like wanting wanting death upon yourself and that isolation. 
you know? Yeah. Because when most, most people, when they, you know, are talking about like that, when they've gone and tried to kill themselves, like they talk about how they feel so isolated from everything. Yeah. You know, feel so alone. Um, yeah. And then, so now that they're on the shore, they're traveling through the, he, he, so he keeps like this, uh, he keeps a body around because he's just, it's like something for him to talk to. It's like, you can tell that he's, Starting to make a connection, like a Wilson connection, like what you said. Yeah, well, and there's also this acknowledgement that he is, quote unquote, crazy because he is talking to this person as if they're alive, but mm-hmm. he also knows that they're not. Yeah. So he has multiple moments of like, you know, talking to a dead guy, mm-hmm. you know, kind of thing. And then, so like, I guess like the next kind of like big thing is like at, upon survival, his he. Well, he finds the Cheeto bag, and then he... I just like how he wears that around, like, a necklace mm-hmm. for the entire movie, which... That's a... It's like, what... What is... I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. It's like, they're surrounded by trash, and they keep using trash to build stuff and build a world for themselves. And like, I feel like there's a metaphor for what the trash means that I'm, I'm having a hard time grasping. I think it... So the trash is an interesting point. So yes, they end up in this kind of wooded area that is definitely part of a larger, because Dan was on a very small island. Now they're part of a larger area, but they're still lost in the woods. Yeah. Quote unquote. It's like his journey back to society and back to reality is there still needs to happen. Well, I, the thing that the trash is, is the, so they get into this area and this area is littered with trash. Mm-hmm. Trash means humans. What I think, what I took it as, is that he is so delusioned in the fact that he is stranded, that he's not putting it together, that he is actually very close to civilization because of all the trash. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's so, in a sense, uh, delusioned and removed that he's not putting it together. Well, if there's all this trash, because at first I thought maybe, oh, another stranded someone. But then as the theme goes on, he's like, he's not putting it together. Like it's somebody tr- is putting this trash it, here. Who's it's, doing it's, that? It's also the trash that he has to work through. Like he has to work through this trash. Like the, like if you kind of think about this entire movie as a journey through your mind. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what I'm saying though. Yeah. Like I don't, he's not putting it together that he's closer to civilization than he thinks. Cause the entire time yeah. he's mm-hmm. pretty Close to civilization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's so alone and processing what he's going through Mm -hmm. that he doesn't put it together that he's actually a lot closer to people than he might initially think. Yeah. And like the the, the closer he gets to people, it's like the it's like in a like if you are a person that's really just like mentally lost and you're having this journey, it's the trash you have to go through and you're like through this. It's a journey, a mental journey you have to go through. And then once you finally get to society and whatnot is when reality comes back to you. Well, because at a certain point, he's in her backyard, basically. Yeah, which that's also the weird thing is like, I don't think that was an accident. That wasn't by chance that he wandered into her backyard. I think this is also a weird, like, there's a weird like thing of like stalking and like how he got so obsessed with this narrative of her and him that he found himself alone, isolated in like proximity like, to her. Yeah. And that's when he went to try to off himself. And then he now has to take this j- mental journey back. And then he finally, fi- when he gets back to, you know, society, he's like in her backyard because of, yeah. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. Like, unless it is just like we're over, I'm overthinking. And it's like, no, you know, be really fucked up if he just ended up in the backyard of the girl that he was trying to like had pictures of. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like it's too on the nose for that. It's like, like there's like they, they, they feel like they, I feel like they really think like why each moment has meaning. Each thing has a meaning. Why it's that. Well, let's, let's talk about why is it called the Swiss army man? Let's get to that. Yeah. Because, well, yeah. So, um, Manny you're, essentially, there's, there's so many that you're bringing up. My head's starting to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Manny starts uh, producing water. So this is the beginning. Well, I guess the beginning of his usefulness is the is the farting, which also like pulls down the pants and just it's like rev, revving him. Yeah. Um, but so Dano's need for water, you know, and then all of a sudden Manny starts producing water. No, oh, what it, it was the the way the body was laying, he was collecting rainwater. Oh yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> that he then uses him. This movie's really gross. Just a heads up. Oh yeah, it's very gross. There's a lot of gross things, and I think that's the point too. It's like your cultural societal idea of what is weird and gross. Mm-hmm. This really puts it in your face of like, why? Mm-hmm. Why is it gross? And especially in a situation of survival. Yeah. You know. Um, but he basically discovers that if he pushes on Manny's chest, he's like a flask. Water will come out. Mm-hmm. And he starts to drink it out of desperation of not having any water. And even says as he's drinking it, oh, God, Manny, you're so gross. You're the the grossest thing in the world or something like that. (laughs) And then Manny starts breathing, like letting out like little like sounds of like talking like air, like. And then by like kind of by grabbing his face and like kind of teaches him how to say his name and Hank's name and introduces themselves. Mm -hmm. And then they just start talking i guess like to kind of skip a beat but yeah i actually got to say really quick like these the, their performances with paul daniel and daniel radcliffe for me were so well done that i don't even really see daniel radcliffe or paul dano like like i see obviously you see them but like it's like Daniel Radcliffe is so good at being with the stiff, weird body and like, where are these talking? Like he's so committed and so in the world of like being a dead body that I don't really see like a regular, like Daniel Radcliffe performance, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that their performances are just so good in this, especially like Paul Dano, like the way that he like punches, like when he, like it, when he says the first thing, screams, oh, yeah. it, <clears throat> punches the fucking body, and then like the way that he just runs out of the cage, <laughs> like it's so manic and hilarious. Yeah, the, that made me laugh too. And then the, even like Daniel's asking, like, "Why did you hit me?" And mm-hmm. his jaws obviously like, like yeah, broken. dislocated. Yeah. Like, and he like pops it back in, and he can talk normally again. So this kind of like starts to introduce like. Yeah, Dano's like talking to this dead body and they start connecting pretty quickly. And even just like, there's like weird things of like the way that uh, Hank is talking to Manny. He's like seeing reflections of himself. He's like, um, he, uh, he, he uses the R word and, uh, uh, and he's like, oh, you know, I sound like my dad. I shouldn't be saying that. Um, and uh, I think like, they get, and what is the next like really big thing is like maybe the, when his penis becomes a t- compass. Well, I was going to say there, he like something about that's kind of interesting too, is that Manny has like amnesia of his life before that he was alive. So mm-hmm. Dano has to go through this, like teaching the whole movie. He's teaching him that's things right. again. Yeah. Cause it, it, that's right. That That's another interesting, like there's this whole um, theme of like, what is, what does it mean to be alive? Yeah. And it's also like, and cause Manny as a dead body that's coming back to life, Manny doesn't know what life is. Yeah, and, like, using the garbage again is, like, a big thing. He starts using the garbage to first explain, like, what is useful and not useful. Yeah. Like, this thing is empty, so it's useless. This Mm -hmm. thing is this. This thing is that. And then is trying to teach him about life by taking the garbage and making these really elaborate dioramas basically yeah of like they create he's starting to create his own world through with trash yeah like making there we go yeah toys and or like figures to Mm -hmm. represent stuff out of the trash yeah um and since and i thought something interesting too that since manny couldn't like really walk or move and he was forgotten and lost he was trash Mm -hmm. and hank's like no you're not trash you know like like a child trying to really explain mm-hmm. explain yourself in a way that you also need to clarify when somebody of a innocent or naive mindset makes a connection that you didn't mean for them to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes then you sense. have to correct that mm-hmm. and reteach it, but in a different way. Because everything is so literal. Yeah. Everything is very literal for this character. Yeah. And, so, and that's kind of a theme that goes without because the entire movie, Manny is a very literal and naive, yeah. like, yeah. takes... Uh, yeah, that's the best way to put it. Yeah, it's, also, it's, person. it's a reflection of, like, of the, of a person's human mind of, like, how we can take things so literally as well. And we have to, like, constantly remind ourselves, like, no, that's not what it was. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, and then... I get, so, like, the big thing also, like, there, the target 
for uh, Hank in this is to, he's trying to find cell service. So his cell phone is on the brink of like dying. The battery's almost dead. Um, so he keeps it off. So, but every once in a while he'll turn it on and you kind of see this countdown from 10% to like six or like to 8% to 6% to like 2% and whatnot. Um, and he's trying to find cell service to find salvation, to like find, you know, connection, yeah. you know, to get saved. Um, so they're con- that's a, one of the, that's what keeps them driving forward into the, into the woods with this is trying to find that cell service. Um, and what is it? What it's a sports illustrated or no. Yeah. And part of the garbage, he finds a sports illustrated swimsuit edition. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid <laughs> and liking those things. Um, and Hank it, or Manny is just like, what's that? I really like that. <laughs> like, and it's this is kind of like with that review where it's talking about like the um, suppressed masculinity, like suppression of like of your of, of sexual like uh, drive or whatever, because he's talking about like how he doesn't he can't masturbate. Yeah, and explains why. Mm-hmm. And, and he, he, he explains to this dead body what masturbation, what sex is, and masturbation is, and whatnot. And then you find out that. Uh, Manny, Danny Radcliffe's penis is a compass. Yeah, because as he's getting aroused, just looking at this Sports Illustrated uh, uh, magazine, the penis just f- f- flopping around. Danny Radcliffe's reaction to that was pretty funny. Oh, really? What do you mean? Like in the like mo- Manny. In the movie? Okay, yeah, like I, thought you were, I thought you were talking about actual like, Oh, no, in no, an like Manny's room. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Oh, yeah. Which also like, goes into the... Yeah, the, the naive... His, fir- yeah. his first direction. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, it's got a mind of its own. Yeah. But, like, you know, he's like, I'm disgusting. This body's disgusting. What's <laughs> wrong? It's like a shame of an erection. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Which is kind of fun. I didn't, I just thought of that. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, so, he's, yeah, they start moving or moving. And, uh, it, and then just kind of like as this movie progresses, Daniel Radcliffe just becomes more of a Swiss army knife type thing. Like, apparently, his, his finger can spark and start a fire. His. Um, a hand can, cur- you know, chop and like break wood. Apparently, his mouth can shave Paul Dano's beard off. That was gross. That was really gross. That was so gross. Uh, yeah, and for the arm thing, just think about Buzz Lightyear when you hit the button on his back. Yeah, he does the karate or the the, yeah. the, the chop. I can't remember what they call it in Toy Story. Uh, uh, super action karate chop, something, something like, like that. something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and then like if he like fills up his mouth or bot like with stuff, and then you can like like punch him in the gut and then like it shoots out like a like a shotgun you know like he's using his mouth for like as like a bullets yeah it, like kills a, a raccoon like, and, yeah to go hunting and like or you can put like a grappling hook in it and yeah like, in his mouth and like shoot well it yeah he makes climb. a grappling hook out of a crutch yeah it's very it's very very, very very bizarre very strange um but i think like maybe the the most the next most important thing narratively that happens is when they fall down into that rut as before he discovers all of this and uh, Manny sees the photo of Sarah on Hank's phone and Manny thinks it's his phone. But does he tell Manny that he's, that it's his phone? That's what I was confused about because of like when I was watching it, I was kind of um under the impression that it was this uh, delusion that they both were just accepting. It was a story. That yeah. they both were just accepting as a possibility. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, maybe this is my wife. I didn't take it as Manny taking it literally, but now that we're talking about him as like his naivety. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. His, uh, I'm like, oh, no, he's taking this story as truth value. Mm-hmm. He's not understanding the hyperbole behind, oh, she could be your blank. She could have been, you know. Yeah. You met her on the, you know what I mean? Um. Well, there's also what was your question? <laughs> the phone, like I like I I, for, I forget how he like. Um, if I he, think that yeah, I think Hank is like, it's like as Man- Manny just thinks it's his phone, and Hank just goes with doesn't it. Doesn't correct him. Yeah, he doesn't blatantly say yeah, it's your phone. But I think he just doesn't correct. No, this is my phone. Yeah, this is well, until phone. the end when he's like, it's actually been my phone with the bear. And that yeah, and that goes into the whole lying theme. Because mm-hmm. um, uh, so it, it kind of sets up this whole thing. They start recreating this moment. Like, so Hank is telling Manny, like, imagine you're on a bus and she sits down next to you or across from you and she's alone, but there's like a sadness to her that you want to like, you know, help or whatever, but a happiness to her that you, that is alluring and whatnot. 
and they kind of start recreating this and literally like he, Paul Tano dresses up like her. So this is where I'm talking about like he puts by being her, he can control what her actions are. And while he projects his narrative onto Manny, mm. then he like he now he's in control of like how it all plays out. Because you can't he can't control or predict what she would do in a situation if Hank was to go and uh, sit next to her. Or you know, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. This is where it gets really heady. Well, this also gets really cool too, because they start making these really like elaborate set pieces out of like garbage they, they're and, literally creating their own world yeah you know and that's what i was talking about like he creates it's, it's kids in the forest yeah he's creating his own world out of the trash around him yeah and it's like it really that's what it made me think of is you know yeah kids in the forest and imagination is mm-hmm. it's like oh, what was that there's this i tried to watch there's this like peter pan modern day telling kind of thing angelina jolie's in it but it's, it's 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 Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland. of all these different like kind of fairy tales put into one, but it's set in the real world. But it cuts to the siblings playing in the forest, mm-hmm. and they pick up the stick, and he's like the pirate captain, and he goes and points the stick, and when the camera turns and pans over, suddenly he's holding a sword. That sounds familiar. And they start sword fighting, yeah. and then you know they find like an old boat, like mm-hmm. topped over, washed ashore. They get on it, and then suddenly it's like this pirate boat. Yeah, you know. It was like kind of gave me that feel mm-hmm. that they're making these set pieces to fit into this illusion that they're making. Yeah, it was really cool. It was like really cool. They just looked. Yeah. They looked cool too. You know, like, yeah. I was like, that's a, that's a pretty good bus yeah. he made with sticks there. Yeah, no, the, yeah, no, it's interesting world. And yeah. they find vodka. He gets drunk. He almost makes out with the corpse, and that's later. Um, fucking weird. Um, yeah, well, and it's like inter- like I guess a point too is that this. So there's this illusion where. Hank Dano plays two people at this point. He is playing this Hank, but then he's also playing this illusion of Sarah. Cause even there's a point where, uh, they're talking and Manny is trying to make a point to Hank by talking to Sarah. Yeah. Cause he takes off the wig and he stops the illusion of like talking to Manny as Hank. Mm-hmm. And then he starts going, Sarah, mm-hmm. Sarah. Yeah. And then he puts it back on, and then he says his meaningful like I'm. This is something that Hank needs to hear, but mm-hmm. through this character that Which we made. Which, if you really think about it, it's Hank through Manny is telling Hank what he needs to hear as Sarah. But is it? Because the movie ends, and it's it. Anyways, we'll get to that. <laughs> um, um, so I think so. Uh, yeah, they start traveling through more and more. I think the next important part i think is the ba- well yeah he find he realizes that he's close to civilization and then goes oh that's right because that, that's when the bear attack happens um and i feel like the bear attack itself is a very big metaphor well after this part so they throw this like party with after they find the vodka and then mm-hmm. invite everybody and they make these trash people and mm-hmm. they're dancing and it, i don't know it was very strange but also kind of like heartfelt yeah oh i guess actually yes yeah, i before the bear attack there's one more one important one more important moment but i want that we need to, i want to bring up that's when they fall into the river oh well then it goes to the party the river the bear attack i thought the pee happened he went to go pee yeah the, the pee is happening that happened that's the bear part of the bear attack oh okay the, um no but did, you, did you have more to talk about like it's about the party it's about that i was gonna say the party thing is very heartfelt yeah, yeah, and yeah, strange at the same time. Yeah, yeah that's all. Um, and then yeah, so they're trying to it, like, like Manny is starting to talk about this. Like, there's this. He feels this separation between them. He's like, even though I'm I'm on top of you and I'm like physically touching you, I feel like there's a wall or a barrier between us that you don't want to like acknowledge. No, well, that was referring to that almost kiss, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they fall into the river, and uh, Manny's the weight of the dead body is pulling Hank down. You know, because he's t- like he has Hank or Manny tied to his body, like you've been mm-hmm. the you know. So and when he goes down, like then he turns around and, like save Manny, and then they kiss, which is just strange. But then Dano realizes that there's oxygen inside of another power. Yeah, yeah. So, but That's this deep. kiss is kind of like this rep, this like acknowledgement of 
they have found themselves together. Like they, that like there's a salvation between the two of them together. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so then they get across and then, yeah, so that gets into the nighttime and Paul Dano goes to, or Hank goes to go pee. And then all of a sudden he sees, um, like car lights, headlights. Yeah. And he's like, he's apparently right off on a fucking highway highway. So they have found salvation. They have found society again. Um, and he opens up his phone and he gets like a bar of service and he runs back to tell Manny the, the ex- exciting news. And man, he's like, there's a very large raccoon eating our food. And then lo and behold, it's a fucking bear. Well, I think, well, first what he does too, using his battery is he goes onto Sarah's Instagram, which I thought was interesting. Oh yeah. 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 Like it's the first thing he does, like going back into that obsession kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But then he runs back and it's this whole, like, I got to tell you something. And he's like, I, man, he's like, I got to tell you something too. And he's like, no, no, me first. And he goes this long drawn, like has this whole, like, like I, it sounds, it seems like, like this is when he's going to confess everything. Yeah. Oh like no, he starts telling like, it's actually my phone. Yeah. He's getting ready to like explain like everything. And he starts explaining it's my phone and all that kind of stuff. But then he goes, no, wait. There's a really large raccoon eating all of our food. It's not a raccoon. Mm-hmm. It's a bear. Yeah. And uh, it's a bear attack. Yep. It's not great. <laughs> and uh, yet yeah, Hank uses Manny somehow to pr- like project them. Oh, the, Hank kind of has like a weird or Manny ends up having like a weird existential crisis. Well, that's what's interesting is like so like Hank grabs Manny and puts a bunch of like pebbles in his mouth to use him as a gun. Mm hmm. But now that Manny is aware that this whole Sarah thing about him having his this. Yeah. Manny's been under the impression that Sarah is his wife and they're trying to get back to her. And that's right. He can be brought back via love and yada, yada, yada. But once this illusion is broken, the powers go away. Yeah. Because his ex is Spider-Man 2. Yeah. His 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 heartbreak is making he can't use his powers. So now they're fucked. So now it's just. Hank and the bear <laughs> like yeah and Hank gets a really bad cut on his leg mm-hmm. yeah the bear mauls how do they end up in the tree there's something he like uses like it, Manny ends up like project like sh- launching them up into the air oh with the fart and the fire yeah 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 shoots him up right mm-hmm. um and the bear so they end up in the tree but then Hank falls down well they have a you're forgetting they're having a really like they're having a very like big like yeah but like they're having a heart to heart and like Manny is starting to have this like whole Manny starts kind of reflecting on to Hank. Like maybe this, like maybe I'm like, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to die again, but maybe I am just dead. But maybe I've just been this whole thing inside of your own mind. That's making you face reality. Not in that black and white. Kind of. I don't know. I feel like it's very on the nose. I took it as very well. Also Manny like is crying. And that was really that was really sad too because he's like basically like, I don't like this. It's oh, cold. Yeah. It's wet. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. You're like, oh, buddy. But then he's like saying like how he basically wants to be dead again because he doesn't want to feel this way. Yeah, which is, I think is a feeling that not everyone has had, but I feel a lot mm-hmm. of people have had. Um, and the at this point too, Hank is about to fall out of the tree ends up falling out of the tree, breaking his leg. Mm-hmm. And then good old Manny to the rescue. Well, while the well, while the bear is dragging Hank away, they're having more of a conversa- conversation as well. And Hank is starting to realize mort- his mortality through... He's gotten to the stage of acceptance. Yeah. Kind of. And there's... But there's also this moment of, like, he finds out that he wants to live. And, um, and Manny then saves the day but i feel like this is kind of like the the bear i feel like by actually realizing because since now hank doesn't have control of his destiny his life his death at this moment he realizes like oh i want to live because if he didn't want if he could just let this bear maul him and kill him well the bear's dragging him away he's not fighting it yeah that's what i meant like with the whole acceptance thing Man, we watch two different movies. <laughs> I feel sometimes at, uh, as we're having this conversation, because like I have so much like thought of like metaphorical stuff in this, and I maybe I just needed to look at it more literally. That's what I think. I think it's at certain. Well, no, but not even because that they're talking about like the shit. Mm-hmm. Then like then 
but hopefully we'll both become shit and then one day our shit will mix and we'll meet again. Yeah. It's this very kind of like just this say la vie, this is what it is, mm-hmm. like oh well. And that gives like Manny this second burst and he becomes like animate again. Mm-hmm. Which was also kind of terrifying watching. It's yeah. all clickety clack. It's fucking yeah. train, train to abuse on. Like, yeah, yeah up, right. Getting up and saves him. And then it's like this kind of swap of roles because now Manny is carrying Hank after they mm-hmm. get away from the bear. And that was also a really funny scene because then suddenly Hank is like in the backyard of Sarah. And, yeah. Oh, no. Uh, well, but they both are. But Manny, Manny's very much like, no, we're going to go see her. Like all like manic and happy. Mm-hmm. And Dano, uh, Hank is all freaked out. Like, no, no, no. Again, in this whole, in this whole movie is this conversation about this is, Manny will say or do something. And then Hank immediately goes to reprimand him of, oh, this is weird. And yeah. then Manny responds with why? Yeah. Why, why is this weird? And he has this, and one of his like, crucial moments is at the end being like one of his like kind of defeating phrases is like, I don't want to live in this world. Why are we going back to the real world? It mm-hmm. sounds terrible. Yeah. You can't do anything. You can't fart when you want to, you can't yeah. do this when you want to. Oh yeah. Because he's keeps saying like, you're not gonna be able to do that when we get back to real. Yeah. yeah. So Manny's kind of like, why do we want to go back to a world where there's so much constraints on just being who you are? Mm-hmm. And it's actually a really good, like, yeah. He's not fucking wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, and I just really loved it because it was this like, this child like, why? Mm-hmm. Why? Why? And then Hank is trying to answer him, but in the cultural, societal conformity kind of way of yeah. because. But why? Well, because. Yeah. That's not an answer. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Because like Manny, uh, Hank can, uh, this is ugh, the names. Hank can't ever really give an answer to why you can or cannot do this. Yeah. It's just, that's the way it is. And Manny doesn't, and towards the end, Manny's like, that's bullshit. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like this answer anymore. And it was very interesting in that way. But yeah, they get back to the backyard and they're having kind of that same kind of moment. And then suddenly a little girl shows up. Oh, weird. Sarah, who they know nothing about, is married and has a child. Yeah. Yep. Whoopsies. <laughs> and apparently he's kind of, it's more of a stalker situation than anything. Yeah. And then, so it's like, I have like a little note about that. It's like, um, oh, I just kind of wrote, I wrote down stalking out of fear of rejection, which is, I think it was like, why would he be stalking her? Why, like what led all of this stuff? You know, if he's been stalking her, like why would he then be lost and trying to kill himself? It's like kind of stalking out of fear of rejection. You know, he's following her, but he's afraid to be rejected you know yeah i mean it could be also like stalking her and then because of the fact they're basically in her backyard Mm -hmm. finding out that she is married and has kid was the breaking point yeah and that's why he's in her backyard yeah yeah that's where the 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 moment happened Mm -hmm. and then he wandered out into the woods yeah because so what happens is is that they yeah, to have a complete stranger as your phone background is kind of weird. Yeah. It's very... <laughs> it's it's weird. It's, it's weird because she is not, like... It just is a weird thought. It's weird because she's not a celebrity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. like, if, you're, if your it, friend had Angelina, Angelina, Angelina Jolie as the background, you probably wouldn't think I twice I know someone who has it. Olivia Munn as their phone background in a <laughs> bikini. And she's like... I'm like, I think it's weird. I mean, I think it's weird too, but I could like, it's like, well, it's Olivia Munn. But if, if it was it's like, not just some random stranger, that but you if saw you're at like, the beach. Oh, who's that? Oh yeah. It's just someone I saw at the beach. You'd be like, dude, yeah, <laughs> that, but the, even if that's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Um, but then the whole conversation with Sarah basically is Hank needs help. Mm-hmm. He's walking around with a dead body. So they get the police involved and it becomes like this. Big, well, first she's like terrified. She's like, what do you do in my backyard? Yeah, but it's like, it kind of ends because it's like, also, he's very quiet because he's like starstruck that he's talking to her, but he's also like in this very sensitive, emotional state. Well, the little girls like says they, 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 uh, they came out of the woods. They need help. They need help. And, and she's like, is, like, this, is this yeah. real? Is this true? And he's just like, yeah. So they like get the authorities involved and. And yeah, they confuse the. They confuse the body like kind of we they did. They confuse a the ago. body. Yeah, they confuse the body for Hank because I think the the phone is in on Hank's body, right? Manny, 
Yeah, sorry, M- Manny's body. Because he, yeah, he has the phone. Like it's, you know, it's his driving. The mm-hmm. picture of Sarah's is like his driving force. So he has the phone. Yeah. And then they get to the backyard and they collapse, and then Manny goes back to being dead, like mm-hmm. actually dead, dead. It's like because reality is is it's like it's actual it's reality now is creeping back into yeah, this it, situation. It's not it's not Hank's delusion. Um, and then it's this <laughs> he has this. Like the f- film crew is interviewing him as Manny, being like, well, "This man was lost in the woods for blah blah blah." Then we only know as Manny, and then he corrects, like, "No, I- I'm Hank." And then he goes on this like long tangent about the magical powers that the body has. Yeah, and then kidnaps the body, and this is where it's interesting because so he like grabs the body on the stretcher and then puts it down on a hill and then like rides it like a sled back into the forest, and as everyone is chasing him. Because also the little girl is now in the forest. Oh, yeah, the little girl starts chasing after them. I forget why she starts running in, into the forest. Yeah, but like, so now everyone's like, okay, this dude stole a body, and now there's a child in the woods with him. So let's yeah. follow. And as they are chasing him, they're in, they're at the bus that they made. They're mm-hmm. at the restaurant. They're at the house they made it's for the party. It's all literally within her, ba- like right in her backyard. They literally type. just chased, yeah. So she has, he has been. Outside this cul-de-sac in the woods, which is terrifying. Yeah, which is why I'm also thinking that the island is a metaphor at the beginning. Because he's literally right there in his in her backyard. There was something I thought about, too, when they are talking about Manny's body, about him being a jumper and washing off. Mm-hmm. Wondering if that's how Dano did it. Like he tried to jump off a bridge? They both jumped off the same bridge. Oh, interesting. That's how they both washed up onto shore. Yeah. Daniel, yeah. You know oh, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. To go with your idea of it being the island is a metaphor for, like, mm-hmm. you know. So they both, because they made it, it was like, they were looking at the body and made it so clear to bring up, oh, yeah, he probably killed himself off the, whatever the bridge was yeah. called. And it takes Oh, yeah, because they're also talking about the laceration, like, um, post-mortem lacerations and, like. Because they think maybe of, yeah. Hank killed him, but they're mm-hmm. like, no, time of death, why is it he's been dead w- yeah. way too long? Yeah. So I'm, that was my thought. I was like, oh, they probably both jumped off the same bridge and, and then Hank, washed up. Hank just happened to live. And Hank lived. Daniel and Manny didn't. Yeah. So they both washed. That's why they're both on the same shore. Yeah. That made Down the th- road mm-hmm. from the house. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So like, that's what I was thinking. He went to the house. The whole de- delusion of them being together got completely fractured because mm-hmm. of the fact she is married, has a kid. He went to the bridge nearby, killed himself. Was on his metaphorical oh. island of uh, alone in isolation. Yeah. And then awoke in down, down river from mm-hmm. this cul-de-sac. And that's how he ended up in the cul-de-sac. Yeah. And then kind of- created his own world and whatnot with his dead body. And then, yeah, now, yeah, now, and, th- and then he's, th- and then with him going back to Manny, be like, no, Manny has all of this magical properties and whatnot, he's stealing his body, he's, now he's having a panic attack of being back in society, so he wants to go back to his delusion. Yeah, he wants to go back and play in the woods, in yeah. this world they made. And then, so now they're on the beach, and now he has to face reality. Well, he's having this whole conversation with him. Very intimate with this corpse and this great shot. It like just kind of pans out Mm -hmm. and everyone that was chasing him is just watching him with this like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Which I think is a a reaction that you, yeah, you're not wrong to have, but like, um, Sarah's, Sarah's face of just like, (laughs) it just cracks me up. She's just like, oh yeah, because you're, he's like confessing that of stalking her pretty much. Yeah. And she's just like, huh? (laughs) Like it's, I was like, yeah, girl, that's, Mm -hmm. This is some shit that you, this is a, this is the weird Tuesday. <laughs> like, this is a weird Tuesday. This is the weirdest Tuesday you've <laughs> ever had. Um, uh, so yeah, he ends up getting handcuffed. I forget. Why are they arresting him? Actually? He stole the body. Oh yeah. Okay. Fair. And, um, the whole, I think the whole phone in the backyard thing would yeah. definitely give you probable cause. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, there's just, there's too much going on. There's he's with a dead body. He came out of the forest. There's signs that he's been stalking. He's in her backyard. I'm like, there's definitely. Let's put you in handcuffs and figure this out. We're yeah. not gonna <laughs> let you just wander around. That's fair. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like. Um, and then he um finally. Oh yeah, there, there's earlier on in the movie, Hank is talking about the farting and like, why can't you just fart in front of me, like. Or Manny's talking about, like, why can't Hank just fart in front of him? You're always going away to fart. 
And that goes into the constructs of like polite, not polite, mm-hmm. you know, it's a societal construct of yeah, how you, you know, present yourself in front of people and your acceptance of who you are in front of like your friends and, and, and society. I want to say, yeah, I want to say societally, at least from our, I'm going to speak for both of us and you can correct me if I'm wrong here in America. Fair. Yeah. Cause even cultures too, burping at dinner is a sign of, mm-hmm. yeah, that was wonderful. Some Eastern countries, yeah, yeah. That was affirmation that that was a great meal. Yeah. So it's like, this movie is very based on societal constructs here in a Western world In a Western world. And I would also say it. <laughs> Sorry. I thought Western snow. <laughs> and just because of what, who the characters are a very, uh, what is the phrase? Uh, heteronormative heteronormative. Yeah. Point of view. Yeah. That's everything. Cause also, cause Hank is a straight man, so yeah, yeah, his yeah. and his dad after his mom passed away, that was like a, oh yeah yeah. It's also a straight man that is teaching his son via yeah. the thought of a white straight man. Yeah. So he's now teaching Manny the same kind of things. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Um. So yeah, when he fi- when he farts, and everyone's like oh like grossed <laughs> out, and he doesn't care. Yeah, like, and that's his like, and that's where that's where the farts in the beginning. I was like, this is super annoying, and then towards the end, you're like. They made it, yeah. Made it. They made it. Make, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. make it. You know. <laughs> like, and then the corpse kind of starts like, like at the beginning, like farting and like setting off, like, like propelling off into the water, and everyone's just staring at like, what the fuck is happening? The dad's laughing. He's like, "This is great." <laughs> that, which is kind of like the dad finally accepting his son. <laughs> it was strange. Way. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, and then no, oh, and and Hank is just like happy to see Manny go off into into the into into the water propel off it's kind of like he his delusion watching his delusion fly away he's now accepting reality and he can face what's happening in front of him and that's where the movie also kind of lost me it got me and lost me at the same time because it was kind of like so did all this happen right did he have these magical powers was he talking to him like i don't know and yeah and then it cuts to like Dan, uh manny propelling off with a big smile on his face off into the ocean mm-hmm. goodbye <laughs> that's that's the end that's, that's, well like i was reading too that dano loved the idea that i think i think it was a kwan when they pitched it to him i think it was kwan said i want you to with the first fart i want you to laugh the last fart i want you to cry yeah that's a good one yeah Dan was like, all right, cool. Man, th- yeah, this movie is just fucking bonkers. It's all, it's, it's, it's so, it's such a strange movie that has, that, because like, just from our talk, our conversations, like, I feel like we watched kind of two different movies because I saw so much more of like this metaphorical sense of like, of loneliness and depression and how somebody's trying to face with that reality and how it's like all just like a metaphorical mental journey. And you saw a lot more of a literal movie that, but still had those themes in it. Yeah. I mean, I'll go back to lot. I don't think this is, I think lobster is stranger. Swiss army man is more absurd. Okay. Sure. I mean, that's how you, yeah. I mean, I think this is one of the strangest goddamn movies I've ever seen. Lobsters. I feel like Lobster has a lot more grounded reality. Yeah. I don't know. I I guess it's kind of trying to compare apples and oranges. That's fair. I mean, it's... It, I think we're only doing that too because they're both A24. They're, they're both A24, but it's because, yeah, it's, it's, it's comparing two different uh, uh, pieces of art, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like they're both... They're both movies that are meant to make a statement about society and people and what a lot of like all art generally is, you know, but they're talking about two different things. Like the lobster's talking about relationships and romantic. I mean, the loneliness definitely is is a part of it, you know, is a theme in it, but it's more about the the loneliness without a romantic partner. While Swiss Army Man is more about just the loneliness and depression of a person that just does is having a hard time dealing with what reality is Mm -hmm. the reality of the situation you know like yeah he is like there is like that desire for like a romantic partner because he's stalking sarah but that's kind of more of like the repercussions of his delusion of his of not wanting to face reality yeah yeah um would you recommend this movie to people again very particular people Mm mm-hmm 
if you had, like if you're like me and it's been on your list for a while and you've never watched it, watch it because it mm-hmm. really is something you've never probably. I can't think of anything remotely like this. It's like I would ask if someone's like, should I watch it? I would then have a follow up question. Be like, do you like to watch movies that you have to interpret? <laughs> My question is, do you like A two four? Yeah, that's yeah. Do you know who A two four? Do you know what company that is? Yeah, you know? I'd be like, all right, well, watch the trailer. <laughs> it's like, what what movie would you liken this to? Nothing. Yeah. Like Castaway, but utterly but, absurd. But fucking absurd. Yeah. A, a Castaway, but very much uh, a mental Castaway. Okay. I mean, yeah. Because even Castaway, I mean, he goes through the stages of grief and everything, but it's mm-hmm. a very literal movie. It is a man yes. stranded on island mm-hmm. for years and how he survives. Yeah. This is the mental strictly only also because of the fact that he's not stranded. He just is delusion to think he is. Yeah. Because he is so close to society. Mm-hmm. It is very, a mental isolation movie. Yeah. So yeah. Um, what do you give it? Wet Mogwai. Wet Mogwai? No, yeah. no, yeah, I. This is a definitely a for me a Mogwai. Wet Mogwai because it's also something I think I need to. Uh, for oh, we gotta clarify what Mogwai is. That's uh, when it's about it's making more. No, I know, but like it's good, but I think it's a very acquired taste. It's definitely something I should. I don't know if I will, but definitely something I should watch again. To try and maybe catch things that I missed. For you, it's like it would be like a 7 out of 10. Yeah, like a 7 out of 10. Like Because yeah. like visually is great, which is a huge thing for me. Yeah. Uh, music is secondary. I love the music. Oh, yeah, the music is fucking great. The music is great. Uh, the performances were really good. It creates a magical feel to this movie. Like I don't you know, like gross shit. That, yeah. That always kind of, dis- I just don't, you know, like I don't like. You don't like raunchy stuff. I don't like raunchy stuff and I don't really like, like gore porn which is i'm not saying this is like hostile or anything but no. those are things that really deter me yeah it's, it's it's definitely got this raunchy humor in it though yeah and i'm not a big raunchy like unless it's nostalgic I it's it really weird it's like because but the, it's it's weird how they use the raunchy humor and raunchiness of this movie to make it uh to make it make it have a statement yeah that's you true know? But yeah, I I would go with the wet mogwai like a cinnamon seven yeah. and ten. That's fine. 10. Yeah, I mean, and I think like it's definitely a mogwai for me. It's like out of ten, it'd be like an eight eight point five because I I really pr- appreciate the performances. Um, yeah, it's shot beautifully. The cinematography is great. I I think it's a really great um metaphor of for depression and whatnot, and just interesting. And the set pieces were cool, like them yeah. making all these little things out of garbage and stuff. That was always, yeah. I love that kind of shit. That I always think that's really fun. It's yeah, but it's one of the most unique movies I've ever watched. Which yeah. is yeah. Um, all right. I, well, we don't know what we're doing next week, actually. We don't. we got to figure that out when we get yep, off. Yep. All right. Um, so, yeah, guys, thanks for listening. I um, know they're a little bit longer of an episode like last week. I think these movies just naturally have a little bit more meat to them for us to talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, like, subscribe. Mm, subscribe through Patreon if you want to get stuff early and whatnot. And I guess uh, we'll talk to you next week. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll talk to you later. This is Tommy. This is Jacob. This is Tommy, Tommy and Jacob's mixtape. Jacob.